Last month I exported over 300 kilowatt hours of solar power, earning me not far off £100 via the Octopus Flux tariff. But could I do better? Is there a way to squeeze even more value from my existing setup? Put your geek hat on and let's take a look. Hi, I'm Chris and welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I asked the question as to whether I could maximise my solar export value by doing a forced discharge from my batteries during the afternoon stroke early evening peak rate period on the Octopus Flux tariff. Your initial reaction might be like mine. Yes, of course I would. But is it as straightforward as that? If I sound a little sceptical, it's based on the suspicion that my existing battery capacity of 7 kilowatt hours would not be large enough to really make this a worthwhile activity. If I did a forced discharge, let's say for an hour or two, from 4 to 5 or 6 p.m., what would that achieve? And what would it do to the state of charge of the batteries and our subsequent power reserve for the remainder of the day? Before we start looking at the detail, here's a quick reminder of our export breakdown for May. You can see that whilst we did export nearly 68 kilowatt hours during the peak rate period, which earned us roughly 25% of our total export value, that was purely down to the sun shining and nothing to do with utilising the stored energy in the batteries. At this point, it's worth summarising our current system setup and outlining a couple of constraints. We have 4.5 kilowatt of panels split equally across two banks one east facing and one west facing, together with 7 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Since signing up to Flux, I've been charging the batteries to 100% during the early morning low rate period, and I'm assuming I'll stick with that approach, at least for the next two to three months during the summer. Adding extra battery capacity to charge up at the low rate and force discharge later on at the high rate might seem a pretty sensible thing to do. But for now, we're going to have to exclude that as an option. So that's our first constraint. It's probably an obvious statement, but doing a forced discharge during the late afternoon, early evening time slot is certain to reduce the state of charge of my batteries somewhat. That's because, at that time of day at least, my installed panel capacity can't match, or exceed for that matter, the 2.4 kilowatt hour discharge rate. If you're lucky enough to have a larger panel array, then this may well not be an issue for you. Clearly, the amount drawn from the batteries will vary depending on the solar conditions at the time. Why is this important to me? Well, I don't want to discharge my batteries so much that I then need to rely on grid import later in the evening, because that would rather negate the purpose of the whole exercise. This gives us our second constraint. Doing some rough and ready calculations and making a couple of assumptions it looks like we need around 2.1 kilowatt hours, that's about 30% of our battery capacity, to cover our normal summer evening base load of 350 watt hours between the hours of 8 pm and 2 am, by which time the low flux rate will kick in again. Given that I currently have the inverter set to not discharge the battery below 20%, Pylon Tech refer to this as the forced discharge SOC. This means any forced discharge profile shouldn't take the battery much lower than 50% state of charge. Of course, these are all ballpark figures and there'll be daily variation, but they should give us a useful yardstick to work from. At this point, I suspect some of you might be saying, this is a lot of trouble I'm going to, why not just give it a try and see what happens? Well, of course, I could, but where's the fun in that? See, I did warn you about putting your geek hat on. Seriously though, while it's not too difficult to configure my inverter to do a forced discharge during a specified time slot, I can currently only do that by editing the setup locally via the inverter front panel. Doing it once or twice is not a problem, but if I needed to change the settings on a regular basis, maybe even daily, then that would become a right faff. More on that later. Before doing a real world test then, I thought I'd see if I could model what might happen. The approach I took was to download some SOC data from my inverter via Solis Cloud for both the best and worst days of the month. There was a high degree of variation between the two, 
which I thought might prove important. Starting with the best day, which was the 30th, we see the batteries maintain 100% charge pretty consistently from around 3.45am, having been charged up during the early morning low rate period, to around 8.30pm in the evening. By that time the sun has started to go down and the house base load is starting to draw power from them. I can't properly explain the dip in SLC we see between 1715 to 1845, but I suspect that's the well-known phenomena in the handyman at home household of fish and chip night when the oven was switched on. However, it doesn't explain the duration of the dip and the rapid recharge back to 100%, so that'll just have to stay a mystery for now. We can ignore it, however, at least for the purposes of what we're doing here. Accepting that this is a pretty simplistic approach, if we discharge the battery for an hour from around 4pm, then I'd expect the state of charge to behave something like the dotted line trace. This is based on dropping around 2.4 kilowatt hour, equivalent to 34% drop in SLC, such that we'd end up around 66%. During the remaining two hours of the peak rate period, the system would then be using whatever incoming solar power there is to recharge the batteries, but would be unlikely to get back much above 85%. Then it'd be a steady decline all the way down to somewhere between 40 to 50% by early morning, following the same gradient as the actual solid line trace. Okay then, what about the worst day, the 8th? What immediately jumps out from this chart is the huge difference between this and the best day, with the battery levelling out around 20% state of charge by late evening. As mentioned previously, this is the value at which I have the inverter set to not discharge the battery any further. In this case then, we'll already be drawing from the grid from around 10.15pm or so, and that's without any forced discharge at all. However, taking the same approach as before, I'd expect the dotted line trace would follow a similar pattern as for the best day. But, starting from a much lower SOC, we'd hit our 20% level a couple of hours sooner, with the result that we'd draw an additional couple of hours power from the grid to cover our base load. Not that the batteries wouldn't have recharged as much as for the best day case, as there'd be less sun around. So what conclusions can we draw so far? Well, forced discharging for an hour under best day conditions certainly looks positive and we keep well within our battery SOC constraints. Not so under worst day conditions though, where it just doesn't look a good idea at all. Well, that's bleeding obvious, you all shout, but is that the whole story? Enough theory, time for some controlled tests. What we have here is the SOC trace from an actual one hour forced discharge between four and 5 p.m. overlaid onto my earlier simplistic SOC model. Note that the actual SLC values I've highlighted, i.e. 68, 89 and 45%, correspond pretty well with my earlier guesstimates. Pat on the back for me then. Just a couple of comments on the actual SLC trace. This was taken on 8th of June, when the solar profile was very similar to the 30th of May. So I think comparing the two is valid. Also, the SLC timeline is shown relative to GMT, which is why the low and high rate periods look one hour early. Conclusion then, a one hour forced discharge from 4pm looks good to me. Okay then, let's push the boat out and go for a two hour discharge. Whoa, steady tiger. We end up down at 20% SOC by around 10.30pm, resulting in us drawing power from the grid for the next three and a half hours or so. Not a good idea. So the sweet spot is probably somewhere between the two, let's say one and a half hours for the sake of argument. Job done then. The optimum force discharge for our setup is around one and a half hours, at least during the relatively sunny months of June, July and August. Well, not quite, and this is why. Once the force discharge period has ended, whether that be for one and a half hours or just one hour as shown here, the remainder of the high rate period is spent recharging the batteries, which means no export during that time. But we know from May's performance that on average there was over 2.3 kilowatt hours of solar power that could be exported during the three hour peak slot anyway, without bothering to do a forced discharge. 
So there's absolutely no point force discharging 2.4 kilowatt hours, all to gain a measly 78 watt hours overall. That'd be a right waste of time and effort. But there is, we just need to do it at a different time. What we see is, if rather than starting our force discharge as soon as possible, i.e. 4 p.m., we instead delay it as much as possible, then we can maximize the overall peak rate export by utilizing the available solar power first before kicking in with the force discharge. So for a one hour discharge starting at 6 p.m. rather than 4 p.m., we'll export nearly 4.3 kilowatt hours as compared to 2.4 kilowatt hours, whilst at the same time only discharging the battery by the same amount, i.e. 34%. Even better, for a one and a half hour discharge, Starting at 5.30 p.m., we'll export 5.1 kilowatt hours in total, yet only discharge the battery by 51%, which is within a gnat's whisker of our battery constraint. It goes without saying that these calculations are based on averages and won't take account of a poor run of cloudy days, but there's clearly some value to be gained over a full month. Now, if deferring your force discharge to the later stages of the peak rate period was already obvious to you, then kudos to you. Just hadn't occurred to me at all until now. If you've stuck with it this far, well done and thanks. What conclusions can we draw, if any? Well, even with a relatively small battery capacity of 7 kilowatt hours, it is possible to squeeze a little more export value from my system. In fact, and assuming the sun shines reasonably consistently, hard to say that, we could probably increase our total export value by something like 20 to 30 percent for the months of June, July and August by doing a forced discharge of one to one and a half hours as described. But are there any downsides? Firstly, these potential gains will just not materialise if the sun doesn't shine consistently. Okay, fairly obvious, but if I leave my forced discharge enabled, then I could end up incurring more costs on some poor days when the batteries get discharged too much and we end up having to draw from the grid in the evening. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be bothered changing my inverter setup on a daily basis via the front panel. Life's too short. Now, if I could do that remotely, say via an app or some other method such as Home Assistant, and maybe even building some intelligent automation based on weather forecast data, then we'd be cooking on gas, if you pardon the pun. But well, that's for the future, maybe. For now, if I can see there's going to be a reasonable run of sunny days, then I'll set up the discharge profile. But as I look out the window at the moment and see thunderclouds approaching, that ain't gonna to be today. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again on the next one. Cheers.